All right, let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to today's webinar, Payments on Salesforce, the totally non-scary webinar on how payments in your CRM can open up a whole new world of possibilities. This is going to be a really exciting uh, opportunity for us to talk about payments, payment processing, subscription billing, even revenue recognition, all of that on Salesforce, how that can help your team grow, be more organized, help prohibit some data loss, you know, that dirty word that we don't like to talk about, but also really ensure that you have a streamlined solution for your organization, regardless of industry or vertical that you might be working with them. So let's scoot forward. Here's a little intro, what we're gonna discuss, you know, who is Blackthorn and why are we even putting on this presentation? Do we have the authority to do it? Then we're gonna go through a few of the benefits of payments on Salesforce, talking things like securely closing a data loop, providing value through revenue recognition tools and automation, why that's important for subscriptions and automated membership or subscription billing services, you know, finding that right solution for you, whether it's build or buy, and how you can empower your staff and your customers with some self-service tools. And then at the end, we're just gonna talk about how Blackthorn might be able to help and your call to action. So who is Blackthorn and why should you listen? This is a really important question. This is Blackthorn. We're founded in 2015, became an official Salesforce partner in 2016. And in that time, we've grown from about eight staff to about a hundred staff with over seven apps and over $9 million in processing, over 500 customers. But if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, what's really important here is that Blackthorn are specialists in our app development. We specialize in payment processing on Salesforce, data compliance, messaging, and yes, even events. But today we're really gonna focus in on that payment processing, what it means for you. And you know, again, how you can really capitalize on this as an organization. And then this is me. So I'm Matt Frank, if you wanna meet me on LinkedIn, just scan that QR code right there. I'm always happy to chat. Director of Tech Evangelism here at Blackthorn. I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for you know about eight years. Uh, before that, I was working with nonprofits, financial institutions, universities, all with the aim of enabling them from a technology standpoint, making sure that their lives are easier, that their staff's lives are easier, and most importantly, that they minimize data loss with excellent, excellent technology that helps them reach their goals, right? So I'm also a Trailhead Double Ranger. I'm very proud of that statistic. And I do make a mean spicy mayo. The secret, and I'll let you in on it here, is smoked chipotles. We can come back to that in the end if there are any questions. So closing that data loop on payments. This is a really important thing here. So let's discuss it. You've bought Salesforce, which is fantastic, right? You've centralized your customer data and it's working. You've increased sales or donations or customer acquisitions, whatever your target KPI is. But now your sales and accountings team, they're really frustrated because they're balancing between systems and your IT team has a bunch of compliance concerns about bringing a lot of external data into your CRM. So how do you satisfy these needs, especially when they're often competing, right? Well, this is how you do it. You use this loop, and I realize this is a triangle. I call it a loop. It's a triangle. We've got corners, but it functions in the same way, where you bring that web and e-commerce all into Salesforce, regardless of your data flow, and you allow for payment processing here, I use Stripe as an example, to bring that data again into Salesforce, but you have that mutual data sharing, that real-time sync that allows webhooks and metadata to pull information from Stripe or your payment processor into Salesforce. And then you use a payments API or a different tool from the App Exchange, and we'll discuss this later on, to push data from Salesforce into your payment processor. At the end of the day, it's a seamless experience for your customers, for your staff, uh, for your accountants, if you have external accountants. So this evaluating a CRM native app 
that maintains PCI DSS compliance and demonstrably strong integrations with leading payment processors like Stripe are your way to go forward. Uh, with an app like this in place, you can easily create and send sales documents. You can enable self-service tools like a virtual terminal, both for members and customers or donors to pay for it within a community context or uh, on a CMS or external website, but also for your staff to use inside of CRM. Uh, you can even track transactions against the appropriate customer for easy and streamlined reporting and analytics using Salesforce reporting or external tools like Tableau for real deep data analytics, Einstein, uh, all part of the Salesforce suite. Or if you're an organization that's using integrated tools like Power BI, you would be able to push the data from Salesforce into there as well. By using these types of apps, it really takes the burden of PCI DSS compliance off your plate too, allowing your team to save time on many of their processes while maintaining data accuracy and security. This is really important. Now, having all of this information inside of Salesforce is one thing, right? Being able to see your opportunities, being able to see your transactions, unpaid invoices, paid invoices, receipts, etc. But how does this help you with something that's really important to a accountant, like revenue recognition? Now, this is super important. Now let's have a baseline definition of what revenue recognition is from a 30,000 foot view. Really important thing to capitalize on here. So revenue recognition, it's an accounting principle. Effectively, uh, it says that a company should recognize revenue as it's earned, not when the payment is received. That's a really important principle here, and it helps make things easier for organizations when it comes time for audits, accountings, et cetera. But again, how does this help you on Salesforce? Well, let's talk about that. It's business critical. So this principle of revenue recognition, it helps your organization keep accurate records. And that really makes you a, uh, it keeps your integrity in place as an organization and the consistency for your financial reporting. Again, when it comes time for tax seasons, audit seasons, what have you, bringing this in there is important. Having that sync between Salesforce and your payment gateway also allows revenue recognition to take place in both areas. This means that if your sales team or your advancement team really loves working in Salesforce, they can continue to do that and see the same data that your finance team is going to see and feel in touch and manipulate over in your ERP or accounting system, or in this case, also in your payment gateway system. You can create click and drag reports in both areas, and you can see that on the right hand side of your screen as well. Uh, and again, this saves time by not having to manually sync data, upload things from you know, Excel or spreadsheets. You are allowing every team to work off the most recent, most informational data that they can get their hands on to make really informed decisions going forward. And all of these tools for reporting for revenue recognition, they can be used for on-platform tools like uh, the App Exchange products, or we could talk about middleware tools or integrated tools that can really help push and pull data as needed. And then there are also formatting tools that are on Salesforce that can take this data that's brought in from the payment processor and export it in the proper formats for your different ERPs. And some examples of Salesforce tools that can do that are CPQ and your accounting sub-ledger. But when you're talking about improving a lot of these revenue recognition processes so that the data is organized and easily consumable for your finance systems, I've got three tips for you as well. Tip number one, automate as much as possible as you're going through this process. So that means when an opportunity is changed or reached a new stage or a period of service has ended, the CRM, let it handle those record updates and automatically sending new data to your ERP. Number two, use tools that enable automated sales document delivery at different stages of the sales cycle. And that way you can focus on product value for your customer rather than creating and sending documents manually. This ties into revenue recognition because it allows you to spot check your finances without having to worry about these other documentation portions of the revenue recognition process as you're communicating with your customers. In three, you can automate your billing. And we'll get into billing in just a second. 
Uh, but whether it's recurring annual payments or complex multi-year prorated subscriptions or even you know, pay later functionality for things like events, save time by automating billing and recognition processes with key milestones and relative dates by automating these processes and then QAing the data output rather than having to manage everything, just doing quality assurance. Your business will be able to recognize revenue when it's appropriate and your finance team will be double checking reports instead of being buried by them. That's super important here. Now, speaking of billing, billing is super important here. And I've incorporated some examples, again, from Stripe Billing, which is a partner that Blackthorn uses, but they have really, really deep integrations with Salesforce. And you can perform a, sort of any API-supported action from within Salesforce by using a connected application like Blackthorns, but there are other ones on the market or even customized tools that you can use with a consulting partner to connect through to your payment gateway. But this allows you to do things like create subscriptions, manipulate them, attach them to opportunities, uh, update them with new terms as needed, you know, add usage to Salesforce, uh, even calculate usage into tiers and invoice them. All of these charges and invoices are all brought into Salesforce. So again, your sales team is always up to date on who's paid what, when, and why. We can send automatic alerts, we can send uh, invoice reminders, payment reminders, even automatic proceeding, again, all of that from within Salesforce, but you're pushing that into a payment processor, which is linked to your ERP. So the subscription billing becomes really easy within Salesforce by adding a tool like a Stripe billing to your arsenal of payment processing tools. And then you're able to connect that through to your ERP for simple revenue recognition tools. So from the point of customer acquisition to payment, to revenue recognition, all of that can be done within Salesforce using these types of integrated tools. Now, when it comes time to determine what tool works best for you, you really have three options here, and it all comes down to build versus buy, right? Choosing the right solution that's right for your organization. And every organization is unique when it comes to this. Your employee makeup is different. Your core values, even your office layout, if you have an office, is unique to you. Uh, but when it comes to payment solutions, you may have more similarities with other companies than you think. Almost every company with a digital presence sort of goes through this dilemma, right? Do I build? Do I buy? And while there's no one size fits all sort of answer, there are features and benefits that may help sway your company to one side or the other. You know, there's three major options that you can see on the screen here. We have app exchange tools, which are native to Salesforce. That's on your left hand side. In the middle, we have integration ware or middleware that's used to push and pull data customized to you uh, between Salesforce and your payment processor and your ERP. And then there's a customized option too, and that's using a Salesforce consulting partner in your payment gateway and coming up with a completely bespoke solution for your organization. Now, when it comes to assessing what's right for you, Firstly, you have to look at, does your team have the in-house ability to build a system from scratch? Yes or no, right? So this is all question trees, logic trees. Or should you be paying an outside consultant to build it? That's that far right cup on there on the page. Or does your team have the skill set if you do have a consultant to build the solution for you? Do you have the internal skill set to support that? So you have to think about this, right? So if the answer is yes, we can build it, we can support it, you may wanna go with the right-hand option of a consulting partner building you a custom integration or even leveraging middleware to do it. But if you've said no to really any of these sorts of questions, can you build it, can you support it? Will you be able to functionally handle the upgrades to a custom coded solution? We may want to look at the benefits of a low code or a managed solution to help bring all of this payments data into Salesforce via the Salesforce app exchange. That's that column that's all the way on the left there. So when you're evaluating your tools, you know, it's important to take the following features into account because again, every organization is different. Does it have bi-directional sync between your CRM and your payment gateway? That's super important when you're evaluating these tools. And it seems like that's the baseline. 
So essentially, how easy is it going to be to get the data you need into your CRM and make it actionable by the teams that you have that are working in Salesforce? Custom solutions that may require some continuous updating by a services vendor, but a managed solution removes that burden from your team. Next question, will I use this payment gateway or this process forever, or even this payment process or forever, right? And again, the answer is probably not. If the last few years of the world changing due to the COVID-19 pandemic, or even the introduction of new payment processing tools and even new currencies like cryptocurrencies has taught us anything at all, the answer is, you know, it's normal for organizations to think about these processes and change payment processors for any number of reasons. In a custom solution, it may lock you into a single point in time as your organization. So if you are, let's say, a, an organization that is willing to accept donations by cryptocurrency, if your current solution or gateway provider doesn't provide that option, today and you build a custom solution, you may not be able to incorporate that in the future. Just things to think about as you're evaluating these solutions. You know, and the third thing to think about is can your team use this solution on the go? That, by that, I mean on a mobile device or with your laptop in a cafe, using a secure connection, of course, or even on a tablet like an iPad or a Samsung a Galaxy tablet. You know, tools like field service lightning aren't required by every organization, especially not every organization that uses Salesforce. But when it's really important, when it's needed, it's super duper important that you evaluate a tool that incorporates that functionality, either as an add on or part of its core functions. Maybe a field rep needs to you know, create a quote and take payment at a client site or perhaps a university advancement officer wants to take a donation on the fly. You really need to ensure that a mobile flexible, mobily flexible payment option can enable your company to meet its customers where they are. And I mean that literally in the field. As you're answering these questions, keep in mind that the value of being centralized on Salesforce where all of your customer data, including financials, needs to be weighed against the cost of a solution. Because it's not just how much are you paying in licensing for a solution on Salesforce or in services to build one. It's also things like, what is the cost to my staff in terms of the hours that they need to reconcile this data on a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual basis? What sort of customer satisfaction am I going to be granting by allowing these new tools to be involved with my Salesforce structure and to more easily enable self-service uh, to my customers? These are all things that have value to you as an organization, if not monetary, then at least from a satisfaction standpoint. So it's worth evaluating and holding against the cost of a license. But by securing your data in CRM, this has vast reporting and analytics resources. And so your team can forecast and grow while empowering any of your in-office, your remote, or your mobile employees at every stage of the sales cycle. That means you know, they're going to be able to access the right data when they need to on any device that uses Salesforce that you've secured as an organization. It makes your life easier to have payments within CRM. So how can Blackthorn help with this? This is my shameless pitch to you, okay? This little chart that we saw earlier, well, there's one difference at the end. Down at that very bottom segment of the triangle, instead of saying payments API, we're saying Blackthorn API. Because every element of this, Blackthorn allows you to bring into Salesforce, whether you're using Stripe or any other number of organ uh, different payment gateways or processors that are on the market. You have your website or your form. You can do checkout from a standalone page, incorporate tools like Stripe Checkout, which give that seamless integration to push data where you need to. All the payments data is going through to Salesforce, going through to Stripe, reconciling, and you're able to see all of it in one place. And this is what Blackthorn does. It's recurring billing. It's payment requests. It's, you know, desk payments and virtual terminals. It's chip and pin cards for your field agents who need to take those payments away. It's on-site and mobile payments. It's web and e-commerce, even inserted inside of member portals if you want to. So we're here to help. And if you want to have a conversation with us, just go to blackthorn.io. 
head over to our content hub. It'll be at the top of the page or check us out on the app exchange at Blackthorn Payments. Thank you very much for attending today. We really appreciate the time that you've spent with us. And, you know, again, check us out. We're here to help, even if it's just to have a conversation with you to push you in the right direction. Bringing this information into Salesforce not only will help you, but it helps all industries using this as a consolidated CRM. Making your staff's life easier is a great way of growing your business as a company. Thanks so much for spending this time. Looking forward to speak to you soon.